when people do go and see it, if they do, that they are careful. And also I hope that they leave their opinions and preconceived notions and political ideas at the door and just allow themselves to be taken away by the humanity of this film. a thing in my high school of performing arts in North Carolina called the Jimmy Awards. So you compete in your regional um, theater awards and then if you win those you get sent to New York to be a part of the National High School Musical Theater Awards and as a finalist you get to sing a solo song and there were casting directors in the audience and they were able to set me up with an audition from Saigon in London. That kind of gave me my first big break. Just constantly grateful of the opportunities that people allow me to at least try. I can't remember a time where I didn't want to choose what I do and what I love. So I would say I have to give credit to the higher powers for that one. I first became involved when Diane, the director, came and saw Miss Egg on the Revival here in New York and literally handed me the script and said, you're Rose. And I said, all right, you then. When I read the script, one of my first thoughts that I actually asked her when she was explaining it to me, I was like, so you want me to play the lead who's a Filipina? and you want to highlight the fact that she's a Filipina. She was like, yeah, of course. And I was like, I'm in. I mean, there is no way that I'm not going to be a part of that. When has any Filipina or Filipino person heard of a movie that highlights the fact that they're Filipino? And especially with an interest in a music genre that's majority of people who sing country music are white. At least the ones that are in mainstream media. So for me, I was like, I need to be a part of that breakthrough of representation. And then I wanted to be the best performer and the best person I could be. So that was kind of, that thought of authenticity was my inspiration. I love country blues. Loretta and Patsy and Dolly and Willie and Johnny and Towns Van Zandt and, and the, the bluesy folksy poetry side. I didn't know any of those artists really except for Dolly when I came to Austin, but my director was like, this is the music that um, Rose would listen to. So I gave it a listen and I was like, no wonder, I'm in love. It's just so beautiful and so you just know exactly where you want to be when you listen to music like that. Never fit in, never could win. Anytime I approach a character, even if it's on stage or not, I try to approach it from a place of humanity and authenticity. Any character, aka any person, you can relate to them in at least one way. We're actually a lot more similar to each other than we think we are. With Rose, it was just too easy. It was like, She's a teenage girl playing the guitar in her bedroom, listening to, to moody music, not doing her homework, wishing that she looked like a white person. That was me! It was interesting to also question some of the things about myself as, the, as Eva. As I was learning about more about Rose and discovering her in front of the camera, it was just an amazing parallel experience. Rose represents everybody. Rose represents so many beautiful young people of color and people of color that feel like they're not seen and they're not represented. And especially now in a situation where the immigration is such a timely and horribly relevant topic. You know, I, I hope that people watch this movie and feel like they, they're seen. We are really trying to push the narrative of this film, the importance of this film, the, the relevance of this film. You know, Yellow Rose would probably not get the same attention as any other, you know, commercialized film would. But we're asking that you take a second look and you go, a movie is a movie, art is art. Yellow Rose is an experience nonetheless. Just because the lead is someone that you've never seen a lead look like, it doesn't mean it's gonna be less of a film. So we hope that you go and see it. And if you don't, that you support it spiritually. When people do go and see it, if they do, that they are careful, um, wear a mask. Um, and also I hope that they leave their opinions and preconceived notions and political ideas at the door and just allow themselves to be taken away by the humanity of this film.
we, we've all been under a lot of pressure the, the past seven months so give yourself the gift of just releasing your spirit and allowing the story just to completely take over. I live in Manhattan and there are no theaters that are playing this in Manhattan so I'm gonna have to get a little creative with how I celebrate this personal feat but I'm also extremely proud I'm proud of the work that this entire production team got done because it's actually really special. I think you are going to love this. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> wow. It would be a nice idea for actors of color and just actors in general to feel like they have an environment to go back to that's welcoming and also understanding. I hope the new normal is, I guess, foundation of respect for other people and respect for yourself. So it's given us a lot of time to really dig up the crap and now we've, we have the crap on a platter and we're just going, hey, can you acknowledge this? Or this is not the best we can do. I have a better option. I would love for the Broadway League to respond to the We See You White American Theater letter that um, a bunch of people have written in accordance to all the social injustice that's been going on in this country. I just hope that the people in power can do something about it. So I don't, I'm not depending on Broadway to come back. But I'm hoping and praying that Broadway will come back in a manner that's acceptable for all actors. Austin was my first experience being in Texas and I love the people, I love the ideas, I love the music, I love the food.